Hello folks, welcome back. I'm the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom. I'm sporting the shirt that I stole from Eho Del Hobo El Vagabundo Dos. Again, from the Southern Pro Lucha Libre, somewhere up on the door of wrestling. The door of wrestling. Southern Pro Lucha Libre card. I haven't, I haven't popped this in a while. Southern Pro Lucha, Lucha Libre. Yay. Um, I'm not here to talk about that, though. I just felt like wearing a different t-shirt. I think everything else is in, is in the washing machine. So, yeah. Kind of one of those last t-shirts, but that's okay. I'll wear this tomorrow, too. When I go grocery shopping, people will be like, cool. Um, I'm here to talk about some pro wrestling. In fact, I have to start off with a whole bunch of thank yous. And one maybe questionable thing. Let's see here. Um, I have to sneeze. There's something out of my nose. I don't know. Chinese spices. Who knows? Um, Jay. Jimno. You, sir. Thank you for your comments. I think we were talking about. Was it what? Rosemary has piercings? Or was it the milk? I don't know. It was something. The you, sir, got you, sir. Just beat the 10 count because you got that six count. E El Eo del Smart Jr. You, sir, still a master of the air guitar.
Oh yeah, I wonder if. Oh shoot. I wonder when Dune comes out. I'm seeing that in the movie theater. I don't care. I'll freaking risk COVID death and everything for that movie. I'm trying to figure out when that's coming out, but that's okay. The mid car act. Again, you're just grooving along, carrying your briefcase boombox. <laughs> Not COVID. Mm -hmm. To edit that out somehow. I don't know. I thought that one thing was like that's that's something stuck in my nose. It's weird. Oh, Isaiah Lewis, you sir, one by dirty pen. And because you asked for it, Killer Zay, I don't know what you're talking about. Though I did learn how to privately chat over on YouTube, but you, sir, are, are just a jackass. The Bean to Frey Wyatt, you, sir, are also a member of the El Generico Band. Ah, oh, weird. It's like something's stuck up there. I hate it. Mm. Oh, that's the worst when you get like a nose hair in like the back of your throat. It's disgusting. Where was I? Oh. Falconet. Holy shit. And Mike V, just like myself, you know Jordan Grace. She is back. Oh my God, Becky, look at her butt. I like big butts and I cannot lie. And not only... <gasps> Ooh, nasty, nasty. That's what I get for going to win Dixie. I get all my delicious soda, oh, my vanilla cola, blue raspberry soda, watermelon soda, strawberry soda, all the flavors under the sun. In fact, I'm going to be a millionaire soon because they had to sign that aluminum, they're running out of aluminum for soda cans. <laughs> I have like seven... I think almost eight garbage bags full of aluminum cans. I don't want to see that price go up. That's okay. Uh, that's called economics. It's called supply and demand. Uh, I'm not here to talk about that. I get to give them my thank yous. Um, this is AEW. And there's going to be a little bonus because this is the AEW bonus. This is the AEW anniversary show. I'm going to show you a bonus for I have this video of Iho del Hobo El Vagabundo Dos cooking in my kitchen. He still has to clean up that kitchen too. Yeah, that sounds about right. Because he was making some grilled cheese chicken tacos. That actually sounds pretty tasty. And I have that on recorded on video 
through various home monitoring devices I have because God knows he shows up, takes my good beer. Dr. Tom steals my, my other good, my better scotches. Very, very disappointed in, in, in all my guests. That's okay. I'm going to talk about some pro wrestling and it starts off hot. Starts off with uh, FTR taking on the best friends. Um, FTR kind of caught this match, I think, like two minutes in. I've been having a bunch of difficulties with uh, WooTube recently. I'm still going to stick with them. But for some reason, you have to play them on Firefox, which makes it look a lot better. And I'll need to remember that, especially more so for next week when I... I might as well mark this down now. Especially when I have a couple shows. Because for some reason, all the wrestling shows seem to be doing them in bunches. Because not so much this weekend, but next weekend, and I'm busy. Because it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday predictions, Friday regular show. Saturday's Bound for Glory. I don't know. Three months. November, December, January. Don't think there's any good shows. I might try something sneaky for Bound for Glory. Only because it's Impact Wrestling. <sighs> Maybe. Because then WWE's next. I'd rather do that. I don't know. Maybe I'll just keep things status quo. Only because of the fact that I have to work. And I should go out in the hobo that night too. I'll figure something out Sunday. And then on Halloween, it's Halloween Havoc. And then the next week, it's going to be a uh, full gear <sighs> by AEW, their pay-per-view. So, yeah, every weekend. And then I'm trying to think when they do Survivor Series. But yeah, it is whenever. So wait a second. Yeah, I'm just gonna be busy. Let's talk, so let's talk about this match. FTR. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what's the best program to use to watch. Ooh, tube. So yeah, it took me a couple of minutes. That's okay. Uh, FTR. All I saw was a back elbow into the slingshot. I love that slingshot into this into the second rope. That just looks so heelish. Using using the ring as a weapon. It's always good to see. <sighs> Damn it! What the hell's wrong with my head today? It just came on too, which is weird. But yet I could taste the delicious the deliciousness of fake Chinese food though. So I know I still have my senses. And I could just taste that amazing watermelon soda too, so I think I'm okay though. And I can smell like the freaking orange stuff I have trying to overpower the sense of my bathroom, so I'm still good folks. Don't mind me. Um from there, Trent, he gets shoulder, shoulder blocked out of the ring. Cash tried to Vader bomb, but that, that wasn't happening. Trent was smart enough. He got the knees up. Cash ate the knees trying to do the Vader bomb. Chuck Taylor, it's his turn for the comeback. The comeback plus. He starts flying through the ring. has the Falcon Arrow. Tully gets involved. He does the leg sweep, which is great. That causes... Dax to fall on top of Chuck, I think. Uh, Chuck. And Trent, they kind of do a over-the-top rope sunset flip, which is always great looking. Best friend said soul food, but no, it's a kick out. A lot of false finishes. Um, but not, not too many, though. It just seems like the right amount. Well, I do like the fact I don't know. They're kicking out of way too many finishers. Like, the word finisher, unless you're in WWE or you hit the pile driver in Impact, the word finisher is kind of weird. In AEW, you can hit, like, five finishers and someone's still going to, like, kick out. So, it's kind of wonky like that. That's the one thing I don't like about AEW. It's good, but bad. It's good in the fact that you don't know when the matches are actually going to end. 
But it's bad in the fact it's like, oh, okay, this is the third time that someone kicked out of that move. That's supposed to be this ultimate dread move. No, if it's the ultimate dread move, like the pile driver, where you're literally compressing someone's neck, or should be compressing someone's neck. <sighs> mm, damn, nasty stuff. Nasty today. And moves that compress the neck should just murder moves should be done and over with. But no, not not in AW. People like kick out of it again, especially if you're the best friends. I mean, I can see the murder hawk kicking out of the the paradigm shift in the opening minutes of the match, and I'll get to that in a little bit. That makes sense. He's a big guy. He's still fresh. One finisher shouldn't finish him, especially at the very beginning when he's fresh and not worn down. But yeah, um, again, best friend said Soul Food. FTR kicked out of that. Uh, Check out pulled out of the ring. Trent fights off the top rope. He gets, of course, crotched by Dax. I think I'm getting a little bit better. Um, then Cash hit the, that DDT. And, and then it was like DDTs for everyone. Again, the DDT used to be one of the least lethalist finishers. All of WWE. Jake the Snake Roberts hit a, hit a DDT. Boom. Match done. A Raven hit the even flow DDT. Boom. Match done. Sting hit the Scorpion Death Lock. Or a, a Scorpion Death Drop. Boom. Match done. Not anymore. Oh, man. Jake just has to be in the back saying. Man. Yeah, the best friends hit the strong zero again, a kick out by Cash. Actually got broken up by Cash's flying headbutt. Again, FTR, they're not they're they're doing more flips, not just fists, but they're doing the flippy stuff too. Ooh. So yeah, uh Chuck eats that. A brain buster. A brain buster on the outside should incapacitate someone to the point where they have to get the stretcher out. But no, that's just Another wrestler. This is another wrestling move, boss. Um, that looked great, though. Uh, Chuck sent through an arcade that Kip was playing. I wonder if that was the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja ones that Walmart sells. Man, they're expensive. If I paid 300 bucks and someone went through my arcade, I'd be pretty pissed off, too. He sent Penelope in the back to get Miro? I don't know, because... I don't know what happened. I don't think Miro ever came out. He's he's trying to comfort Lana. Or giving Lana back rubs from going through so many tables. Or celebrating with a little bit of the bubble. For the, due to the fact that Lana is going to get to be squashed by Asuka at Hell in a Cell. And probably the opening match. Yep. Congratulations, Lana. You get to lose to Asuka. And probably go through a couple other tables. Um, then, of course, Chuck E. T. called the awful waffle. And that got everyone upset. Um, yeah. That's never a smart thing. Don't call those spots. Once they tell you, kind of interfered a little bit. Again, smart Tully Blanchard. But yeah, he eats the pin. Yeah, word to the wise, don't call your spots. Cause, oh, he got nailed with a belt, that's why. <laughs> Heel victory. Um, FTR wins. They should keep those belts for a while. Unless they drop them to the Young Bucks. at Because the Young Bucks are winning the tournament. I'm not... Uh, yeah, that's all that has to be said. Um, FTR win. It was a good match. Um, wasn't anything sloppy. Wasn't spectacular. Again, too many, too many. I don't even mind the false finishes and roll ups. It's just when like you hit finisher after finisher and you keep on kicking out of it, it gets old. Cheeseburger match though. And Jeff cuts a promo, calls out Chris Jericho. He's going to take Chris Jericho to dinner. 
Chris Jericho has to be very careful. Remember, he lost that belt at an Outback Steakhouse. Or, yeah, it was some steakhouse. It was, was it Outback? It wasn't. Yeah, I'll say Outback. Um, Tony Schiavone and Britt Baker cut a promo. That was funny. Britt Baker's like, like, like they're in the spogging, they're massaging. And she's staring over Tony. She's like, you're naked? He's like, yeah. Ah! Britt Baker freaks out. Uh, Rebel kind of freaks out. Then then Tony's like, he could care less. He's like, oh, feels amazing. Until he like, starts to wax his chest hair. No, no, no. Then the next match, we have Orange Cassidy taking on Cody Rhodes. <sighs> if Cody Rhodes... <sighs> Let me let me clear my throat first. Really wants to be a serious wrestler. He can't have time limit draws to the likes of Orange Cassidy. He should wreck Orange Cassidy. With that being said, we see Darby Allen who's going to take on <sighs> something salt and chewy for a change. He's going to take on Cody Rhodes, and it's probably going to go to a, a three-way dance or probably some ridiculous ladder match for the uh, TNT Championship belt. But Darby Allen, what's he doing up in the hobo section? He's like where people like me go because I can't afford other seats. Yeah. Darby Allen's up in the hobo section. If you're going to be up in the hobo section, you better have a beach ball. Darby Allen, you need to have a black and white colored beach ball when you sit in the hobo section, along with what's affectionately called the bleacher creatures. But uh, this match starts off. Um, OC, he ducks the collar and elbow tie up, begins to frustrate Cody Rhodes. Cody, uh, he goes to a waist lock then. Cody's obviously bigger, stronger than. Than Orange Cassidy. Uh, Cassidy has kind of like Lama Histra, like a standing Lama Histra, which is pretty good. I do enjoy when they do the roll ups when it's a big setup like that. Lama Histra is a very common roll up technique, but it's a technique. You're just not kind of schoolboying them. It's a whole technique. There's a series of, of locks and positions you have to be in to do Lama Histra. Move I've never kind of figured out yet. Um, one day I will. Yeah, so he hit a standing Lama Heaster that was amazing. This actually was a really good technical match until it got, until you could hear the announcement saying there's five minutes left, and you're like, oh wow, 15 minutes went by? Okay, five minutes left. We'll see what happens. Um, eventually, Orange Cassidy gets serious, hit a super kick, then a dive onto Cody. Uh, Cody, of course, lands right in front of the, the, the dork order, dark order, I'm sorry. Dark Order, even though it's just all the losers from the Dark Order. Yeah, if all the losers are there, they're the Dork Order. Just like Jim Cornette says. Only when Evil Uno, Stu Grayson, and Brody Lee along with Cole Cabana are there, then it's the Dark Order. But when it's just like the losers like mingling, it's the Dork Order. Um, they get involved. Silver takes the title. He wants, he wants to whack. Cody Rhodes on the head with it. Orange Cassidy takes the belt, shoves it back into the arms of Arn Anderson. The ref says, you, 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 you're out of here. Kicks out the dork order. Although, because they were in the, in the stands, like, shouldn't they be, like, escorted out for, like, interfering in a match? If I did that, I'm sure the cops would just tase me, take me out back, and beat me. But no, that doesn't happen to the dark or the dork order. I'm sorry. Uh, Cody goes for a crossroads. They got turned to a scum dog millionaire. They did. They tried the yay booze. Cody eventually had a basement drop. He's like, I'm done with this. Uh, drags, shoves Orange Cassidy into the corner, pulls him down, goes to the outside, wraps that leg, wraps Orange Cassidy's leg around the ring post as he should. Because the ring post is probably one of, it's one of, well, it's the hardest part of the ring. One, because it's just metal. <laughs> Zero padding. 
the ring, the, the steel steps, the ring post, and the actual turnbuckle bolt. Those are the three hardest parts of the ring. Again, like the apron is done there. I think it's like the fifth hardest part of the ring. Now that I think about it. Unless you count the ring bell. And the ring hammer. Ramps are wooden. So yeah. Yeah, the ramps. All wood. Although it might have that soft, plush carpet on it though. Who knows. Uh, let's see here. From there. Cody, Show, uh, Cody Showbos does, does some push-ups. Hits a reverse suplex again. Should have been the end of the match probably. Um, actually, if he, had a, if he hit a super crossroads... That should have been it. Then you start hearing the timekeeper, and you're like, oh, God, no. This is going to be a, a time limit draw. Really? I guess so. Um, that was the only bad thing in the match. Um, again, the diving DDTs and Michinoku driver. Cody locks in the figure four, then locks in the figure four. Um, those are the, the break beach on the, on the ring apron. Again, fifth hardest part of the ring. Actually, probably then sixth hardest or six or sixth hardest part of the ring, depending on how you enumerate. Uh, when they do double clotheslines, look like Orange Cassie got the work of that. Cody kicks out of the second break beach. Time limit draw. Uh, not a fan of them. Um, nobody wins. It's the death, death, finish, baby. Not only does my boy know how to bleed, blade, and get some color in the mat, but he also has learned the art of the death, death, finish, baby. Oh, sweetie, so good, man. Oh, yeah, baby. The dust is finished in effect, but you know what happens? That's a dusty ham sandwich. Then there's a little bit more of a promo. Um, the murder hawk uh, talks to people. Um, then uh, Jake Roberts starts a promo. Moxie's there. Murder the. Lance Archer, the murder hawk, just nails someone. Nails him with a, with a forearm, knocks him like out. Um, Matt Hardy's there in the in the crowd with the whole Hardy clan. Um, so he has the three kids now. Remy Harvey still looks kind of like beautiful, but she looks like she's had three kids. Like before an impact, she looked like she never had any kids. But now, like, she looks like she had five. That's okay. Um, you get to see Daddy's workplace. And then Sammy starts to burn pictures of Matt Hardy. I guess they're going to continue this now. Indeed. Um, yep, then uh, the next thing they have is all the tag teams. They're going to do a draw, like a lotto thing, four tag teams. Four tag teams enter, one tag team leaves. It's a four-way tag, four-way elimination tag team match. The last team, I think it's elimination. I'm not too sure about that though. But yeah, it's going to be a four-way tag team match, and they pick the names out of a bin. It's going to be the Private Party, uh, the Dark Order, with um, Silver and his partner, Butcher and Blade. Should probably. Work. Here, then hopefully I time this right. That's okay. Um, then the oh god, <sighs> why couldn't they just have had the main event go on for a solid 20 25 minutes instead of the time it did? Because the next match we had Big Swole taking on Hikaru Shida. I'll tell you what. <sighs> I can't wait till Chris Statlander's back from injury. I I hate to say this, but I can't wait till Britt Baker comes back. Um, all the other women that had COVID and or injury. 
I wouldn't be against seeing Magical Girl Yuna, um, Miss Freddie Mercury, whatever her name was. Um, bring back Kyrie Hojo. Kyrie Sane. Who else could they import? Uh, Bree Priestley should come back. Thunder Rosa should never leave. But Big Swole. I think I left a comment that, you know what? I could have a better... This match was just sloppy. It started off okay. I'm like, eh, this is going to be okay. And then all of a sudden, after the trade of roll-ups, it just went downhill from there. It starts off, they lock up, headlock, wrist lock, kind of classic stuff. Really classic, easy stuff. <sighs> Again, there's that believability factor where in wrestling, you in pro wrestling, you want it's, it is the theater of the absurd. You want to suspend your disbelief, but there's no way Hikaru Shida should ever shoulder tackle Big Swole. Hikaru Shida's normal woman height, I'll say, between five four and five six. Big Swole, I think she. I mean, she looks to be about. Five eight ish, five nine. Um, formerly of the Air Force, there's no way a smaller, although Hikaru Shida did get chubby cheeks, she's been having too many Butterfingers and Kit Kats because I don't think she's cheeseburgers, but oh, cheeseburgers are so good. Oh, yeah, out there in the YouTube audience, let me know about something, let me know if you want to see. How to make homemade Mexican pizzas or cheese stuffed bacon cheeseburgers. That'll be the next Cooking with a Hobo show. So yeah, it's one of those two things. So whatever you guys decide and let me know, um, I'll make that, make a video of it for Bound for Glory. Then I'll post it hopefully a lot sooner than I posted this. Um, Iho Del Hobo Vagabundo Vente Cinco's Grilled Cheese Chicken Tacos. Again, yeah, I just want to go on a quick rant and rave. I do hate the fact that Taco Bell is changing its menu. Never should do that. Again, no more Frito burritos, no more a whole, no more Mexican pizza, no more a whole bunch of stuff. I've said it; it's done and over with. Because heaven knows this match is not worth talking about. Um, so then, yeah, she did hits a shoulder tackle. That probably should never happen. Um, unless it's someone her size or smaller, someone who's bigger, a little bit more jacked, like big swole should be able to eat, should be able to just, um, absorb that. It makes big swole look weak. Um, kind of against this, it kind of like tosses that idea of disbelief of pro wrestling out the window. Like, how could this much smaller girl, like, take that bigger woman down with just a shoulder tackle? Yeah, you can say momentum, but still, yeah. Um, and what else do we have? Oh, yeah, then, like, they trade roll-ups, and, and then it just gets sloppy. Um, uh, she had tried a, a, a kip-up, but couldn't hit it. She had a weight. Big Swole kind of looked a little gassed. She threw the timing off. There was this bosh Phoenix bomb that looked terrible. The weak knees. You could tell Shida was actually trying to work with her. It, it, it just got sloppy really quick. And it was an obvious sloppiness. I, I'm sorry, Hikaru Shida. This match was a piece of toast. Then there's something about Sean Spears. The only thing I know about Sean Spears is that his wife is probably too skinny. And Billy Kay's cuter looking. So, yeah. And then we have our main event with main archer taking on John Moxley. Just starts off. Uh, Lance Archer's in the ring. John Moxley runs in the ring. First thing he does, yeah. yeah no, no ring announcement. This is, this, is, this is actually the way it should be. 
between these two. John Moxley just paradigm shifts Lance, Lance Archer. Lance Archer kicks out to, at two. This kick out of a finisher makes sense. Lance Archer is fresh. It's that surprise. Lance Archer is a, a monster among men. Uh, he has to be a good couple inches taller. Oh, geez, I'll say 50 pounds, at least 50 to 70 pounds heavier than Moxley of muscle. So that makes sense that he kicks out of an early finisher. When you're 15 minutes in a match and you're the, a little bit you're the same size for the most part, and you kick out of a devastating finisher like a brain buster which has sent people to hospitals, kayfabe, and or otherwise. Yeah, it doesn't look good. But again, Lance Archer, fresh, first move he hit, got hit on him. He kind of, was that's that wake-up call, that was great. Um, you mean, so, so that was a great start to the match. Uh, Archer then uh, takes Moxley out of the ring against a no-DQ match. Mox dives on Archer, which is kind of cool to see. Then Mox gets, uh, gets, gets, gets pounded a little bit. Uh, cannonball to the outside. That was really good looking. Uh, then, uh-oh. Lance Archer sets up the tables. Again, the rule of tables, you set up those tables, you eventually will go through those tables unless the table's already set up. So with that, you know it's going to happen later on in this match. And then there was the that, was that uh, one forearm by Archer knocked Moxley out. Moxley is so good at selling. Um, Moxley again off the ropes. It's a German uh, release German suplex, and then close line. He starts to toss, toss chairs and rings. Uh, Mox tries to dive because Archer escapes to the outside, runs into a trash can. That was good. Then then back in the ring, he got nailed by the single use garbage can. Um, from there, Moxley, um, they jockey a little bit on the ring apron. He paradigm shifts Lance Archer through the table. Again, Lance Archer, if you did not set up those tables, that wouldn't have happened to you. Uh, Lance Archer eventually counters. Well, Lance Archer goes for the blackout. That gets countered into a crucifix. And a quick, quick, sneaky win there by John Moxley. It was a good match, though, other than the fact you know the rule of tables. It was a cheeseburger match. And then you see Eddie Kingston. Yeah, Eddie Kingston come out with a uh, Pentagon and Phoenix. Again, Archer's trying to like maim John o John Moxley. A uh, Phoenix takes a chair right to Lance Archer. Lance Archer just looks like confused. It's like why? And just annoyed by the chair shot. Eventually, Jake kind of corrals him. They head off. Um, that leaves Eddie, Eddie Kingston, uh, the Lucha Brothers, and John Mox in the ring. Eddie Kingston says a bunch of nice things about Mox, raises his hand, and then eventually he turns on him. Um, Mox tries to choke him up, but no, that, 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 or actually he didn't try to choke him out. I'm sorry, he tried to choke out Archer with the, the bulldog choke or the captain's hook. But yeah, once Eddie Kingston got in. Um, they raised his hands again. Uh, Lu uh, he just like spinning back fists. John Moxley, uh, the Lucha Brothers keep the referees at bay. Eddie Kingston slaps on the rear naked choke. I like the fact that they call it the rear naked choke instead of like giving it some like one of any numerous ridiculous names. Uh, put Moxley to sleep, brags over him, takes the belt, said, This should be mine. Look how pretty it is. That's the way the show ended. So that was a pretty good ending. Um, as far as anniversary shows go, it was okay. I mean, they only had really the four matches. I mean, they, they showcased the champions. I don't know. That woman's match really just took the life out of this show say it but again AEW does that whole roller coaster great show bad show great show bad show this was a meh show this was a this show was a ham sandwich
And that's it for AEW. Um, only one more show to do this week. Yeah, because I, I need to, to wrestle. I need to get unwrestled. Or get ready for, for way too much wrestling. Um, so now, Friday, I'm going to do, again, very typically, my SmackDown show. Hopefully that's better than last week's. I don't know. We'll see. I don't have much show. But now, we have a little special bonus feature. You have cooking with this time, not not me, not Hobo Tom, but cooking with Iho del Hobo El Vagabundo um, Cuatro Cinco. So enjoy, folks, and thank you for... Welcome back, for I'm the one, the only, oh wait, I'm El Vagabundo Dos Hobo. I'm, yo, and that was kind of marinated a little bit, I got washed off. I almost forgot to do this. Uh, for I am Hijo del Hobo El Vagabundo when I'm here in the Hobo house making El Hobo Gato washing stuff for me. I'm here shaking a nice little dinner for myself and potential co-workers tomorrow making some grilled cheese chicken burritos because they're muy bien. And so I'm out here at the grill. You can see the steam coming off the grill. Oh, well, we got flaming chicken. So I have the grilled chicken going. Actually, I have to. Looks like I have to flip that a little bit. So that's the first part of this fantastic meal. Eventually, I'll be bringing that inside. Ooh, that's not good. Oh, there we go. And the, the hobo cat is here to protect. And to serve. Because tonight's the night of Victory Road. So I'm going to ask Senior Hobo Tom. If you can put this video up Monday. So again, we're in the Hobo House. It's also the Hobo House. Because, oh my god, it's freaking disgusting. But there I am. Bien, bien, bien. What? Your connection is trying to reconnect. That's no bueno. Oh wait, there it goes. So two people. So again, I'm going to leave this here. Still kind of waiting. Wait, 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 wait. Try it. Um, refresh. Let's see. Woo! Impact. So again, I'm going to get stuff ready. I have to go flip that chicken over. Oh, still waiting for incoming signal. Of course, it will have issues with all no signal. That's okay. I shall be back. I'm going to make some nice, creative dinner. And actually I should have to go flip that chicken over because that chicken's probably well done. Because it was marinating some sweet Vidal onion. You see the other ingredients here on the table. Again, yeah, pretty simple stuff. I just have to put the cheese up. Where is this guy key up? Oh, there's, there's the super tongs. There we go. So yeah, I kind of forgot to show. I just used a very basic sweet Vidal onion. As a marinade, eventually the stuff's going to be chopped up. Again, we're going to the dark. It's El Hobo Gato. Or Senora Hobo Gato. Or La Senora Gato. Let's see. Let's see. Let's go over here a little bit. Man, the grill's actually really hot. But I think it's also that steam gets to it. I don't care if it's freaking hard. That's probably good. That just gets moved to the top. Everything else is going to get a little bit of a flip around. I honestly forget if these are have bones in them or boneless. I really don't care as long as it's cooked. can't feel any bone, but that doesn't mean freaking anything. It doesn't matter if it's a little hard. So it was just a few more minutes. See if things are going. See if things are going on the old internet. So that stuff's almost done. Let's see here. If you want to see what matches first, because I have four minutes, I might start off with some adult beverage of choice. So that tequila, we're going to have some vodka and something. So let's see here. So refreshing, so having technical issues. Let's see here. So, let's see here. 
So I'll make this fold in half very simply. Put you there. This is going to be a little bit festive. You want a nice festive hurricane glass? And so we fill that nice little festive hurricane glass up with ice. Have some colorful stuff here. Pour a little bit of the yummy yummy in. Don't want too much. And probably a good jigger full. That's probably pretty good for now because it will drip down, drip drip, Johnny drip drip. There we go, one little bit of splash. El, el Vodka y El Mountino Lightning. You can tell it has a pretty cool color to it. That looks kind of festive for a good wrestling fest. Now we're going to get back to... Actually, I think that chicken's going to be done. I have my adult beverage in hand, which is good. Uh-oh. Fight versus viewers is one hell of an opening. Maybe I'll go to Twitter. I don't know. Let's see here. So again, well, this is a little bit bonus, so I'll be right back. Bye! Okay, so I finally decided to work. I have my cutting board here. I know this chicken, I know for sure 100% is done. So that's good, because I moved part of it around. Let's see here. I can actually feel the heat. So there's a grill right there. My sandals to protect my feet from God knows what living in the grass here. Turn the burners off. Chicken. I think most of that carbon is not so much, doesn't matter because it's going to get chopped up anyway. Nothing else is there, so I'll close that. That's good to go. Chop, chop time. Oh wow, the Rascals won! The Rascals won! See who said hey! Ray Lewis! What's up, sir? Finally got it working at least. Oh, let's see this kind of. Tell you what, I don't know what it is outside, but for some reason I come home. Ah, yeah. Not coronavirus, trust me. Very simply, because I don't know if you can see that chicken. 
That's a problem. Here, he's going to grab a fork. Um, sear a pan. No, you can't see my face. I took my mascara off. No, no, you can't see my face. I can't reveal my face. So generally, very simply, what I'm going to do, I have some chunky salsa. Saucepan, very quickly, because I forget if, this, if there's bones in here or not. Oh, yeah, there's bones in here. Again, I'm just going to kind of give it a rough chop. I want to almost shred it. I'm going to get all that meat as much as I can off that bone. Again, if my knife can't cut through it, that means I don't want it. I'm trying to chop all around that bone, cut all around that bone. You'll see, because actually, I mean, for the most part, if I just have this bone left, that's actually really good. So that means I got all the meat off that. That's why I use all the stuff. All the meat there. Kind of caramelized a little bit, so there's, there's going to be stuff there. I hate bone, bony stuff. So it's like quasi twice cooked chicken. It's mainly, I just put it in a saucepan. Honestly, just to warm it up a little bit. Again, you can see I'm kind of taking, taking all that meat off the bone. Give it a very rough chop. I think that's also the skin that caramelized too. Because look at that delicious looking white meat. The skin just like got grilled to anything. Actually, I'm going to take some of that skin off. Because that's just... There we go. Look at that. Look at all that fresh... Oh. Amazing white meat. And if worse comes to worse, if the skin kind of chars, that's fine. There's some char on it. It's not bad. I mean, again, if I can take, again, that nasty skin off. I don't know why, I don't know why I get this stuff. This was actually given to me, kind of by my parents, and they know I don't like the, the I don't like, normally I don't get skinless I normally get skinless, boneless meat. It's so much easier to cook, so much easier to prep. I don't know. She's, my mom thought it was a deal at Publix. But then again, she's not the one that has to go through all this work to get all this meat off, though. Then it goes in the pan. Again, yeah, it's a fairly rough chop, mainly because I want some chunkiness to it. Um, again, I don't care if there's, there's some skin on it. It does add a little bit to the flavor. The bone does add a little bit to the flavor, but still. Again, if I, oh, look at that delicious piece of meat, though. So well cooked. And get most of that meat. And hopefully, when I put some of the, the salsa in it, kind of let it simmer. Again, you're not really cooking it in the salsa, you're just kind of, it's there. Almost like pasta sauce, you just want to warm that pasta sauce up. That's the way I've always viewed it. I think she realizes that's not worth. If I, was, if I wasn't cooking for this, for me, and some coworkers, this this is actually a lot of freaking work. I'm just realizing that now. And just take my knife right against the bone. 
Get some of that meat. Oh, delicious chicken meat. Again, some's okay. You don't want to have freaking all carbon like this though. That's not good. No one wants to eat that. And really kind of rough chop it up. Try and get it as much off the skin as possible. I just didn't feel like taking the skin off. That's way too much prep work in the morning for me. My mornings are busy as anything anyway. Now you can also do this by hand. I just prefer, again, mainly because of my coworkers. I'm using a knife and fork. If, if like you're making this for your family, if you just want to go by hand, go for it. So you can see I got a lot of it in still. And then just really just a bunch of junk on this plate, so that's not bad. I'm gonna get all that good delicious meat as much as I can into it. Eat the skin, all that stuff. So that's good. So that's good. So this stuff can go right in the garbage. El Garbagino! You know, you get so much more meat. So here in this pan, I'm gonna turn on fairly lightly. I don't wanna really cook it. I'm gonna set it to about six, six and a half. And yeah, just to give it some flavor. Show you what I'm doing here. So really, it's a very light simmer. You might see some steam. I just want to coat it a little bit. Get some of that moisture off. Again, kind of that salsa sauce. We'll get a little that skin off. That's good. Now I'm also adding into this some cheese sauce. Yep, that's so uh, it's going to take up a lot of space. So it's pretty good. So we'll see what happens. So we're just going to let that cook off, and then we'll be back. Back to the wrestling, yay! Bye! Okay, so as you can tell, I'm back. Kind of reduced a little bit. Oh, look at that amazing looking dinner. Let's see, so I have my bowl ready. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start to build the burritos. So I have burrito shells. I like to get the big ones as big as possible. I just put, kind of put that down there. Um, I like to use a fork. Like, again, get like a little chunk here. Get some meat, some salsa. Put that right down there. Try and make it nice, line up nice. So that way, the tighter this is when you start off, the easier it is. So that's probably a pretty good amount. Now the key is, you want to have some cheese sauce. I don't know why, but Taco Bell always used like the cheapest cheese sauce. So I found this stuff. So this has some jalapeno cheddar. Has a little oomph to it. If I can even get this freaking thing open, what the hell is wrong? I'm not that weak, am I? You know what? There's more than one way to, to, to open a can of cheese. There we go. That's all I needed. I don't know why. Every so often there's always, uh, always that one issue with something. I'm having issues all night between technical issues, issues with work, Women who don't know how to dress themselves, I have no idea. Again, oh, look at that cheese. Again, straight chicken salsa and some cheese. And wrap it up burrito style, one fold, one fold. Over, tuck. Pull that up. That goes in here. And then, honestly, repeat the process. 
So you don't have to see the whole repeating the process. I will show it to you very quickly. I'm making a bunch of these because I'll probably have like a few of them. Some chicken down there. Cheese sauce. Tuck, tuck, over, tuck. Rap, 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 rap. Pan that goes. And so on and so forth. So I'll be back. So again, I have stuff ready. I'll be back. Okay, welcome back, folks. Um, food's about ready for a presentation. So I'll see, let me put my mask wrist down so that no one will actually see what my real identity is. And my spatula is always very important. And also personal protection, folks. Um, you don't necessarily need to wear a mask in the kitchen like me. I wear my mask wrist. But again, you do need some hand protection. Oh, let's see. Oh, look at that. That's for me and that's for the bosses. That's actually really amazing looking at that looks like a glass cloth. Let's take a look at these amazing grilled cheese burritos. Oh, so cheesy it is. My plate already. Oh, look at that cheese just come off. I mean, should be able to get at least two of these off. Oh no, the cheese freaking came. Ouch! Well, that's why. It's always one that gives me issues for some reason. But that's okay. I mean, if it's only one that gives you an issue, guess what? There's always enough cheese on the bottom. I think it's because the cheese kind of melted down on it. That's okay. Glosses will like those. Put some just on top there. And these actually look much better than whatever Taco Bell served. So let's get the money shot in here. So I'll go do want to try a little piece of and I do apologize, my counter's a little bit messy. Or his counter's a little bit messy because he is trying to get ready for Christmas. Look at that perfect money shot. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. And I'll talk to everyone, well, sometime. Bye.